Well, hola, bon dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream. We have a YouTube channel and a podcast too. So do please subscribe at YouTube. And also, if you are a, uh, well, if you like a podcast but haven't listened to ours yet, please do. And you can consume that via Spotify, which is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, I have an adventurous plan this morning. Uh, quite a lot to fit in. I was thinking, should I put, should I mention that it's National Castle Day and show you a few castles around Portugal, as well as do one of the second of Jerry's legendary quizzes? Jerry from Expats Portugal uh, got a quiz for you. That's what I'm saying there. Pens and paper at the ready, as well as the weather, as well as a really good news bicycle based story today. I'm going to try and do it all. So please, uh, seatbelts on. <laughs> Let's go for it. Uh, Joe, good morning to you. Uh, Joe Johnson in early with a lovely hola bon dia. Um, hola bon dia to you as well. Toodle bang, Joe. Toodle bang. So let's have a look at that weather now and uh, see what's happening in the capital. 15 degrees and clear. Nice sunny day by the look of it in Lisbon. I'm really not getting that looking out of my window. I can barely see beyond the first tree. It's all foggy in the valley. It's quite nice and atmospheric, but... Um, Looks a bit chilly and autumnal, and that's why I put up the screensaver of the dragonfly there. A nice memory from Eco Paradise Central Portugal uh, from the summertime there, that dragonfly, and thanks to them for that. So 27 degrees to look forward to today in the capital. Uh, in Porto, it's partly cloudy and 15 degrees may well rise to 23. It'll be 27 in the capital. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Coimbra is partly cloudy at 14 degrees. A nice day, though. Look, 26 degrees in Coimbra. And in Faro, 20 degrees at the moment, nice and sunny, rising to 27, just like in the capital the rest of the day today. And I, um, I'm going I'm to do, I know we've got a lot to squeeze in, but I also want to tell you about Aveiro, 16 degrees and clear, rising to 23. And let's take another, shall we? Just one more. A place probably we don't speak about very often. Let's go to Porto Alegre. Let's say Porto Alegre, 14 degrees today and nice and clear at the moment with 26 degrees to look forward to. Oh, Shtabal, I've got to do, while I'm here, uh, Setubal, uh, or Shtabal, however you say it, and I'm, I've got no definitive idea on that at the moment, but uh, wine for the wine club, oh, which I must uh, post up in the Good Morning Portugal wine club community page, from Shtabal, uh, Garvo, Gary Austin, sterling effort uh, in the preparation for this, a Shtabal wine, a red to try a reserve of red, no less, to try tomorrow. And it's 16 degrees in Shtabal at the moment with 28 degrees the high today there. So I think that's enough of the weather for now. Wanted to share a lovely good news story with you. Oh, lots of people here this morning. Let's just, before we go to the bicy bicycling based uh, good news, uh, let's say hello, Shelley. Shelley's here uh, this morning. Good morning to you. Hola, bon dia, Shelley. See you later. Uh, Zander, uh, hola, bon dia from cloudy Houston, Texas. I have no idea why I'm up so early. I was just thinking that, Zander. Good heavens. Uh, just couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd jump in so quietly, speak quietly. Um, it must only be, what, um, three in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning for Zander. Um, uh, Gary Austin's here. So, yeah, Zander, thank you. What a sterling effort from you as well being here. Uh, this time of day. Uh, morning, Carl, Joe, and all from Garvo, Gary Austin in Alviazra and from Southampton. Hola, bon dia from a cool Southampton. Seven days to go, <laughs> not counting down or anything. Seven days to go for you, Paul. Uh, so we're all rooting for you this side. Uh, beer chilling, um, bacalhau baking. I, depend, you know, I don't know. It's not everyone's cup of tea, is it? But uh, you know what I mean. Metaphorically, the bacalhau is baking and the beer is chilling for you, sir. Uh, for your arrival in Portugal. Richard, hello, Richard. A round of applause from Richard. Excellent. Um, where are you, mate, in your journey? Uh, Eugene McCrossan from Ireland. Hola, bon dia, Torres uh, from Eugene. Hello, Eugene. Uh, looking forward to your company again in the expat man cave on Friday night. And um, Caneta Naumau. Um, that's something to do with hands, isn't it? Come on. You can't just chuck in a thing like that, Garvo, without explanation. What does that mean, uh, Caneta Nama? That's not the name of the wine, is it, um, that I mentioned earlier on that you've chosen for us this week? Looking forward to that. It's 3 a.m. 3 a.m. over there in Houston, Texas with Xander. Wow. Um, hola, bon dia from Wayne Barker, settling in to life in Portugal. How's it going? Lovely pictures of your man cave on our expat man cave Facebook group. Good effort, sir. Looks brilliant. Uh, and Nunu Cardozo, bon dia, can't believe it's going to be 27 in Lisboa, in Northampton, it will be 15 max today, bah, I'm so sorry, I am so sorry, Nunu, um, that I'm rubbing it in, you know, in the mornings here, 
um, whilst you're in, in the UK. And I'm just giving you an extra dose of sodage uh, for, to you. So apologies for that. And of course, a Kaneta Namar means pen in hand for the quiz. Gary's excited about it. Um, if no, well, I, that's two of us, Gary. Um, I love Jerry's quizzes. I really do. It's a chance to learn a bit more about the language culture um, and, um, yeah, just uh, learn more about Portugal and Portuguese life. So we'll do that um, as a as a upbeat conclusion to the show and have a bit of fun with that in, in, in a moment. But look at this. Um, this uh, from the Portugal resident. I really like this a lot. Uh, and as I read more of it, the more I liked it, actually. Uh, this is the, the headline from the Portugal resident, uh, an article from Natasha Don, our favourite journalist at our favourite publication. COVID proves a blessing in disguise for Portugal's bicycle makers. Now, some of you may, and you, know, you could be completely forgiven for not knowing that Portugal is a, a, a foremost, a, well, a, a bicycle manufacturer at all. Turns out, Portugal makes loads of bicycles and is experiencing something of a, not exactly a renaissance, but um, a boom, an absolute boom. Let's find out more. Portugal's bicycle makers feared for their future when the coronavirus pandemic forced them to shut for two months in March. But 2020 now looks set to be a bumper year as people are shunning public transport. That's another one of those words you only hear in papers, isn't it? Shunning public transport and opting for healthier ways of getting around. Reuters brings this uplifting news at a time when it's never been more important to be fit, active and healthy, says the agency. As Europe's largest manufacturer of bicycles, Portugal had to shut nearly 40 factories at the start of the pandemic, putting 8,000, I think that's 8,000 8, rather than 8 and 4 noughts, 80,000. I'm, I'm going to go with 8,000 um, to not be sensationalist. Can't be 80,000 people, can it, in 40 factories uh, on furlough. Now those factories are struggling to keep up with a booming global demand. So this is where it gets very interesting. Uh, when we closed on March the 13th, we thought it'd be a catastrophe, said Bruno Salgado, executive board member of RTE Bikes, which owns Europe's largest uh, bicycle factory in Gaia. That's up near Porto, of course. But it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. And this is, I found this because last night uh, we, we were on the Portuguese News Hour, uh, which we do on a Tuesday evening from 10 o'clock. And um, Donna Jacqueline, our um, expat elder, um, she who gives us inspiration and pastoral comfort. Uh, she's a remarkable lady. She's in her 80s, uh, an expat in, in Portugal, uh, lives over Caldash Way. She's studying internet marketing. Uh, in her 80s, which I don't, you know, I don't, don't want to make it sound like, you know, too sort of patronizing, really, because why, why, why wouldn't she? But I still think that's a sort of extraordinary effort um, to be studying internet marketing at 80. And she's, she's building an online community of people. Um, and she suggested to me, why don't we make the news hour sort of more positive news? And I thought, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. So we, we've brought together the Happy Homesteaders group and Portuguese Positive News just as a beacon of light on Facebook, actually. Because, I mean, you look at some Facebook groups at the moment and it's constant moaning and fighting and, and you know, just negativity. So Happy Homesteaders is now Happy Homesteaders and Portuguese Positive News. And our radio show on a Tuesday night is Portuguese Positive News. Uh, and we, and we uh, welcome your stories like this one. So we have this silver lining uh, with... Um, this boom of bicycle making and uh, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise says bruno as all over the world people have started avoiding crowded trains and buses preferring to cycle walk or jog to work and other destinations explains reuters portugal exports about 90 percent of the bicycles it produces with key markets in germany france and italy as lockdowns imposed to halt the spread of COVID-19 began to ease across Europe during the summer months. Distributors around the continent ran out of stock, pushing Portuguese manufacturers to raise production capacity. RT Bikes is now working at full steam, producing 5,000 bicycles a day from an average of three to 4,000 this time last year. Other firms have seen demand double. And this, when one recalls that Portugal's production had already jumped 42% in 2019, to a then record 2.7 million bikes, which represents almost a quarter of all bicycles produced in Europe. Isn't that amazing? And you, cause you, you know, I keep discovering things that Portugal makes and produces, you know, the, the obvious things, um, you know, like uh, wine and cork. And, and then, and then you scratch, and, and then I found it the other day, rice, rice is grown in the Alentasia, but tea, uh, tea in Madeira, right? And now bicycles, so many bicycles as well. And the embarrassing thing for me here, 
is that I, I was, um, I think I would like to say I was ahead of this curve and thought to myself, if this gets really bad, this COVID thing, um, there, you know, there may be disruption to all sorts of supply chains, including petrol. So I better get myself a bicycle. And that was one of the first things I did is it was with, with the higher car I had, I stuffed a bicycle into the back from Intermarche. Turns out, though, I bought a blooming Spanish bike. So I will forever bear that um, shame that here in Portugal, where so many bicycles are made and how I'd love to be riding around on a Portuguese bicycle, I'm actually riding a Spanish bicycle. So please, uh, Portuguese bicycle makers, do forgive me. And um, if you do want to sponsor a, a Good Morning Portugal bicycle painted in the, in the colors you prefer, send it my way. I'll come and get it and ride it, ride it home. Absolutely. So there you go. Isn't that lovely good news uh, about the... Um, bicycle industry in Portugal. Absolutely wonderful. We're going to look at castles in a minute and we will, pens and paper at the ready, be doing Jerry's Quiz Part 2, the sequel. But i got to find out what everyone's up to this morning. Uh, hola, bon dia, morning for all from us, sunny Timoth, Devon, UK. Having Portugal withdrawal or could be lack of wine club banter since two weeks dry now. Dry two weeks now. What is it? Whichever way you look at it, it's two dry weeks of not drinking Portuguese wine or any by the sound of it. Sunny, good effort, I have to say take my hat off to you um and and, and well done it's a it's a laudable effort and i do look forward to y yours and henry's company again in the wine club sometime soon when it suits you no pressure there's nothing worse than people nagging you to drink is there so i won't be doing that uh, go on just have one i won't be doing that um but to look forward to having your company again soon uh, thank thank you for that greeting this morning currently on the train to london victoria here to collect my van and on my way back as soon as it's ready. Fabulous, Richard. Good news. Uh, look forward to seeing you uh, perhaps next time when you come to back to Portugal. Uh, Jeff, hola, bon dia. Jeff was our uh, guest yesterday talking about uh, CBD oil and cannabis. And, and and I think really, you know, we were looking at uh, the health picture more generally, weren't we, in terms of, you know, how it can be in the hands of the corporations now um, and how we might... Um, take it back a little bit i mean jeff wasn't talking about that specifically but it, it did it did beg the question um for a little bit of a relaxation on um cannabis plant growing and we discovered yesterday that in some countries in europe you can grow your own few plants for your own consumption uh, whether that be medicinally or what's what we recreationally um like jeff i'm not a smoker myself but um, I do really appreciate the benefits, of, health benefits of CBD oil. And it does seem a bit unfair that um, you can't grow your own and process your own health products from cannabis whilst huge companies, appear, it, it appears now, are able to come and grow and make millions of euros from doing that. So hopefully that we'll see a little bit of a change in that sometime soon. And Jeff was a fabulous guest. See my interview with him on YouTube. Uh, or on the Spotify podcast aforementioned. Hi, hello, Ty. Uh, bon dia, Turush. Um, here we go. Desejando a todos um, optimum dia. So I'm thinking there, you know, wishing a happy day to all, a good day to everybody from Ty there. Thank you very much, Ty. All our good news for the bike manufacturers. Yeah, I love that story. I really do. I, and it was really uh, a surprise to me. Uh, Nancy Souza, that's fantastic. I'm glad it turned out even better than expected. Finally, people are riding bicycles, which isn't, I mean, you, you don't really want a bicycle in Lisboa, do you? It, <laughs> where I live, it's great. It's, it's, it's pretty flat and it's a lovely way to get around and it's, this is actually a part i mean that's another thing about portugal the um cycling competitions you know like tour de france style where i lived in korea they had a road race around the town and it was fantastic it's the sort of thing that i know would have shut down a british town and it would and it made a huge song and dance about it here in portugal just one sunday shut a few roads there was a beautiful uh, plane tree lined avenue there that's the start and finish point and they raced around the town for a few hours. It was fantastic. Families, you know, obviously any opportunity to have a picnic. Uh, people were picnicking and, and gathering, watching the cyclists. And then within about half an hour, you'd never have known they were there. It was so fantastic. But yeah, uh, uh, road racing, cycling of that kind. Well, I don't know what the what the term is for that. Is, is it road racing? Um, big in Portugal as well. Another thing um, I've discovered since being here. Uh, hopping beer shop or hop in, hop in, the hop in beer shop, I think that's probably what it is, dot com. Um, if we go to this place, then you can forget to jump on a bicycle. <laughs> it's probably probably best. Let's get a cab. Let's have a designated driver, shall we, Ferry, if we're all going. Whatever that is, uh, I'm thinking that um, Ferry is putting a link in there as a suggestion for a man cave, expat man cave outing. Lady is invited, of course, as well. We're not in any way exclusive. We're just oriented that way. But all are welcome on the expat man cave. 
when we talk about such things as beer, which is, I suspect, what Ferry's talking about with that link. Okay, very quickly then on castles. Uh, I'm going to have a sip of tea. Hold your horses. Idioms, hold like hold your horses. We need to return to that, don't we? Any any of you Portuguese folks listening, with, can you share with us your favourite Portuguese turn of phrase or idiom? You know, like uh, w- waking up with your feet out the window, that sort of thing. Do let us know. That's I always love to hear those. And uh, I'm going to tell you now that the Bomberos in Panela posted, uh, today is National Castle Day, and what a special castle we have, they say. And they do. I mean, this time last year, or was it the year before? Certainly, as it was getting a bit colder and, and, and more wintry, I walked with the kids around Panella Castle, picking up walnuts off the floor. Then we went back later to their Precipio, is it called? Their nativity scene at Panella Castle. It's absolutely lovely. You must go there. Um, and they say, as a curiosity, and for those who haven't visited, Panella Castle lies on a limestone hill and occupies a space of approximately half an acre. It's characterized by being in granite, uh, a granite stone uh, on a north-south axis. The 1755 earthquake caused the fall of the Menage Tower, the clock tower, as well as one of the fence doors. What about you? Do you know any interesting elements about Panella Castle? I only really know about the Principio and the Walnuts, but it's a beautiful prelude. And thank you uh, to the Bomberos of Panella. Great job. Uh, please always support the Bomberos if you can. Um, the, the What this led on to for me is uh, a lovely little article. Before we go to the quiz, I know people are getting excited about the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> maybe um let's have, just have a quick look at 10 castles in portugal more hidden treasure for you that's what this show's about and it is unearthing treasure you know pretty much every day some surprise comes to me about portugal and i hope that's the same for you and if you've got a little surprise about portugal that you want to share via this outlet please do just let me know send me a pm um, I, I would like to think i'm very approachable perhaps too approachable uh, the 10 most beautiful castles in portugal i hope you can see on your screen there. Let me just take off that confusing thing in the background that's telling you that the show is going to start in 60 seconds. It started long ago, folks. Uh, but there you go. That's a bit easier, isn't it? On the eye, uh, the 10 most beautiful castles in Portugal. And we start with the Belém Tower there. Uh, we'll come back to that. But uh, lovely photos here for you on the podcast. I will shout out as best I can about these 10 castles. The National, and you know, let me know if you've been to these actually. Uh, the National Palace of Pena, uh, uh, lovely. Uh, a sort of orange, I mean, multicolored castle. That's that's not a building that wants to hide, is it, on the landscape? National Palace of Pena is the most famous castle in Portugal, say them, at culture trip. I don't know if that's true, actually. It's a controversial opening, isn't it? Uh, due to its colorful appearance and its imposing location at the at the peak of the highest hill above the town of Sintra. So there you go, yeah. Sintra, of course, famous for its palaces and castles and beautiful buildings, and that's certainly one of them, the National Palace of Pena. Uh, yeah, possibly then the most popular uh, castle. Back to the Belang Tower, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that you'll see there um, just to the west of Lisboa. Great to walk along the waterfront to Belém, uh, built in the 16th century there and has been ornamented with the symbols of the house of King Manuel I. Um, I'm not going to read too much of these because we've got the quiz to do. Uh, Castle of the Moors, in at number three, Castle of the Moors was built during the 8th and 9th centuries. That's tremendous, isn't it, with its castle wall and is one of the oldest preserved fortresses in Portugal. Guimarães Castle, now uh, dating back to the 10th century. That's looking a little more formal, isn't it, and castellated, considered to be one of the most important medieval fortresses in northern Europe. Its striking feature is the wall's built in the shape of a pentagram with eight rectangular crenellated towers, whatever they are. Uh, Almoral Castle, we, we featured Almoral Castle last week, didn't we? Just one show. We had one castle, and I'm doing ten for you today. So there, there you go. You've got Almoral uh, going in there, uh, which is on a small rocky island in the middle of the Tagus River. Sandstone, that one. Tamar Castle, of course, that would have to be in here, wouldn't it? UNESCO World Heritage Site dates back to the 12th century. Great to go there and to the convent. Tamar's great to visit anyway. It's been too long. Must go there again soon. Once belonging to the Knights Templar is also a convent erected in the 12th century, considered to be one of the groundbreaking castles of its kind in Portugal because of the incorporation of unusually rounded towers. Its original mission was to protect the Portuguese land from the intrusion of the Moors. Uh, this is culture trip I'm reading from. Excellent work. Obidosh Castle now. Uh, I think a lot of you have probably been to Obidosh Castle. Uh, the construction of this magical castle dates back to the Roman presence in Portugal. 
Don't talk much about the Romans, do we, on on here? Um, but yes, a presence of the Romans for sure in Portugal. And Obidus, Obidus Castle has towers shaped in a cylinder and a square, while limestone and marble add a grandiose facet to the facade. It's, it's like being sold by an estate agent, isn't it? This fine castle dates back to the Roman presence, <laughs> which is now on the market, boasting its limestone and marble grandiose facets on its facade. Fine example of a well-preserved fortification offers in the region of uh, 60 trillion zillion euros. Uh, Belva Castle now, um, in Portugal, of course, uh, 10 castles of Portugal we're sharing with you. Belva, Belver Castle was originally built to prevent enemy access to the River Tagus after the defeat of King Sancho. It's a, it's a pretty castle, that one. Uh, after the defeat of King Sancho in the 12th century, the castle was transferred to the Order of the Hospitales, who entrenched their monopoly of power over the entire territory of the region. I've not heard of these people before, the Hospitales. Um, and it's nothing to do with ho the hospitality trade, which is what I originally thought. You know, the castle was transferred to the order of the Hospitalers, who were a, a renowned um, hotel chain. Not. Um, castle of Evaramont. That's a beauty, is it not? That looks like a bucket and spade sand castle from a seaside that somebody has plopped there. I think it's got four towers. Certainly see three of them from this picture. Another example of an interestingly shaped castle is that of this one, Castle Evaramont, uh, which pushes four, four we go, four, hit, hit, yes, there are four cylindrical towers into the spotlight so that the building can appear as a seamless whole structure. This place is also remarkable for the fact that it held the signing of the concession of Evaramont, thereby making the end of a six-year period of civil war in Portugal in the 18th century. Excellent work. And I think this is the last one, of the Castle of Viana do Alentejo. Uh, beautiful bathing there in the beautiful Alentejo sunshine. One castle, it says here, that's often overlooked by tourists is the castle of Viana do, do Alentejo. I want to say Viana do Castelo, don't I? Uh, but this is the castle of Viana do Alentejo, which is a shame since uh, uh, it's a shame that it's overlooked since this Gothic masterpiece is one of the more beautiful fortresses in Portugal. Located, and this is reason enough to go. It's located in the heart of the Alentejo. The two-toned white and grey octagonal structure was built in the beginning of the 14th century and since then has gone undergone a few restoration efforts. I, I wonder if they have been done, if the new kitchen has, was, sim, was sympathetic to the original design, as, the, as was the uh, jacuzzi tub. The two-toned white and grey octagonal structure was built in the beginning of the 14th century. It's undergone these few restoration efforts. Uh, the last taking place a couple of decades ago. Good heavens. So I wonder what it's got now then. Some some blue lighting, perhaps. Uh, topped in romantic towers uh, and bordered on one side by a cathedral. It's a lovely representation of Portuguese architecture from the 1300s. That is the last one to share with you today. And the article was written in collaboration for Culture Trip by Nina Santosh. I hope you, will, um, you were glad of that excursion into castles there. How many of those have you been to, folks? Quiz is coming, quiz is coming. Uh, Obidosh Castle is lovely, says Will. Good morning to you, Will. Like the one in the, the Shrek movies. You can almost hear Lord Farquhar crying from the ramparts there by the sound of it. Um, yes, Ty likes uh, Penella Castle as well, like me. Uh, I'd highly recommend the Penella Castle. Looking forward to visiting more. Yeah, uh, hold your fire for a moment. Uh, the walnuts just on the ground there, fresh walnuts. I think that's going to be a December thing, isn't it? An early December thing. My goodness, I'm missing quite a few um, comments here. Let me just go back to those. Uh, hopefully, the agent will turn up to start the car matriculation. Oh, my goodness. Fingers crossed. You're a brave man getting into that, Wayne. You must love that car, <laughs> I'm thinking. Garvo, even though the sun is shining, I'm soaking wet because I am jet washing the paintwork on the house. He is that kind of neighbour. Are there a few things more annoying on a Sunday morning? I know it's not Sunday, but... Your neighbour, I mean, these, these men with, with, with power tools like jet washers, chainsaws and stuff, um, go steady, Gary. Um, it's, quite, <clears throat> it's quite noisy for the rest of the neighbourhood. He's jet washing the paintwork on the house. And it's one of those tools, I think, where, where, once a man gets it in his hand, it, it can just go, oh, I just need to do that a little bit. Oh, I just missed a bit. And, and before you know it, it's two hours of jet washing. And everyone in the neighborhood is thoroughly exhausted by that droning noise in the background. Or is it just me? 
Um, but good luck with that, Gary. I like the French approach. Government giving money to cycle repair shops for people to get their old bicycles repaired. Better than buying new and leaving the old ones rusting in their sheds. Absolutely, Ty. And perhaps, or a bit of both, you know. Um, lovely to get a, a, a new bike or, a, a, you know, a child getting a, a, their first brand new bike. Wonderful. That's, you know, I think a lot of us remember that, don't we, fondly, uh, our first bicycle. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for, for the repairing, absolutely. And, um, you know, mix and match. And, and for just seeing more people on bicycles would be fabulous. And, you know, the, the other thing, of course, with this is, like, why have privately owned bicycles as well? If, if, like you say, and I agree with you, there are loads rusting in sheds, let's get them repaired. It's work for people, isn't it? The, the bicycle is such an incredible invention, um, you know, ecologically friendly, helps you keep fit. Just get them repaired, stick them out on the street, let people just use them. They do that in Korea, actually, in Anadia, where I live. There is a, a pink bike scheme where you just go in. It was very simple. I just, um, I think, gave some sort of ID, gave me a key, and off I went. It's fantastic. Uh, from Yvonne, uh, bon dia. Uh, Yvonne is in Dublin there. Uh, fantastic to hear from you this morning. Steve and Claire, good morning from a very rainy Manchester. Very rainy emphasis there. <laughs> Normally rainy, but very rainy today. Claire and Steve, good morning to you. Hola, bon dia. Um, I'd highly recommend the Panana Castle. We did that one. Um, and I would, But it's still true. Go there, folks. Uh, what did the Romans ever do for us? Well, <laughs> there was the wine. When I went to the Roman ruins at Rub near Rubbersal, I can't remember the next village on. Lovely place. Not far from Panana Castle, actually. Um, I was told that the the latitude of, of that part of Portugal was very similar um, to, well, I just generally, I guess, I'm looking at my world map if it's to be trusted from Ikea. So you see, the map is not the territory, is it? Maps are representations. But I think the Romans love Portugal because of the, the, the similar latitude and being able to grow olives and wine and crops that they were familiar with. So they could replicate replicate life in Rome or life in, in, in Italy uh, very easily here in Portugal and loved Portugal, I believe. And I, I don't know enough about the history of the Romans in Portugal. We will, of course, uh, do that uh, at some stage. And um, that's a, that's a long conversation. That's a whole show. We'll we'll do a show called "What Did the Romans Ever Do for Us in Portugal?" Okay, Gary, good idea. Uh, good morning from a bright and sunny Silver Coast. I think bicycles <laughs> should have to pay road tax and insurance, same as vehicles, as they are a pay, a pin up the. I'm going to say bottom, and not what you wrote, Valerie. I'm surprised at you this morning. Honestly, it's a family show. Load of them going up the old old Cabasa Road yesterday. I hope that's not a euphemism. N not racing. Just a casual ride while chit-chatting. Must have been 30 car cars piled up behind them, not able to get past, including me. Ended up being late for an appointment because of, because of it, as there is nowhere on that road to overtake, and they were strung out so you couldn't even zip by. I think Valerie is still upset about that. Let it go, Valerie. Let it go. Join me for my meditation group, maybe, at 10. <laughs> Take a chill pill, Valerie. I know I'm, I'm making light of it. I, that is annoying. That is annoying, without a doubt, especially when you see these you know, cyclists, these, what are they called, mammals, middle-aged men in Lycra, just chit-chatting. But, you know, it, again, I'm thinking this is Portugal. You know, wh whoever's in front of you has the road right, even if it is 30 people, 30 middle-aged men in Lycra, just chit-chatting to each other, having a smoke, taking a phone call, six abreast. Got to, ro got to roll with that, got to roll with that, Valerie, but I'm sorry that you got frustrated there. Come on, come and meditate with us sometime. Uh, never been in Holland, I guess. <laughs> That's, I think that's aimed at Valerie. Uh, yes, uh, I think I understand they have a few bicycles in Holland, perhaps as many as Beijing. I don't know, according to that song. Bon dia from Anna. Hello, Anna. It's hard to find a Portuguese who has not who has not visited at least one castle. I'm sure that's true. Um, you know, we looked at 10 this morning, you know, and I'm sure there are more than, um, you know, there's more than one a castle per million people here. In I wonder what it is. I wonder how many castles there are per head of population. And I'm sure you're right. Portuguese kids must get taken to castles on a regular basis. Bon dia, todos areas. The man like Frank is here, everybody. Um, I don't. I, I, he's my co-host on the Expat Man Cave, and um, he is he is no, naughty Frank. It could be his nickname. I, I went to see him. We had a production meeting, so called, for the Expat Man Cave um, the other morning, and he and I somehow str got straight into the Expat Man Cave vibes. We're drinking a little fino. Um, uh, whatever it was, Frank, what was it? 10.30 in the morning in true expat man caves. I don't even know how that happened. Um, but I think it's something to do with you, Frank, 
And you know this expression, mad, bad, and dangerous to know. You know, I don't mean bad. I mean bad meaning good, obviously. But um, you are some kind of influence on me, Frank, and I'm looking forward to more of it. Um, I bought a new bike when I turned 63, says Penny. Assumed I would be able to ride it easily after 59 years. <laughs> No chance. The most nervous wobbly bike ride ever. But I bet you could do it, right? After the wobbles, did you get back on? Are you are you now using it every day, Penny? Let us know. Very hilly and mountainous around us. A bike would kill me, says Joe. <laughs> Just around the garden then. Uh, we'll go to the neighbours. There are more cars in the city of Houston than in the entire state of Mississippi. Riding a bike on these roads is treacherous. Yeah, that, that I mean, that's part of the problem. And, that, you know, you have to be careful in Portugal as well. Um, people have a very particular driving style here, so you do be careful. Uh, drove down a road that made me think the Romans never came this way. <laughs> That's true of a lot of central Portugal. They didn't like central Portugal, did they? I think they stayed on the on the low ground. A uh, nice one, Wayne. Uh, next on my list, I think. Uh, would that be a bicycle or a castle or what, Ty? Uh, Holland is set up for it, though. Lots of cycle lanes, etc. Uh, and Anna has put in, oh, a lovely link to a castle, I think. Or maybe the list of castles. Yes, it is. It is the Lista da Fortifica. Anna, will you choose um, a palavra do dia? May I put that on a if it is an honour, upon you uh, to choose a word, a palavra do dia for us today to help us boost up our language. Um, something to do with castles will be awesome, Anna, if you'd be happy uh, to do that for us. Be very, very grateful to you. Oh, my goodness, it's half past nine. Should be gone already, but I promised you a quiz, and a quiz you shall have. That should have read 50 years. No, it's been stuck in the shed ever since COVID. Uh, Penny has a bike for sale, everybody. Uh, just check the Good Morning Portugal small ads classifieds. Ladies' bike for sale, hardly used. So, okay, quiz time. Um, pens and paper at the ready. I'm going to rattle through this. I love Jerry's quizzes, but I don't know how to do this. How I open up PowerPoint whilst doing a screen share. Bear with me. I'm going to have a sip of tea as well. Okay. So share the screen. It's going to be an application window. That's how we do it. We're going to go there and then we're going to click on that. And hopefully we will have a, no, we haven't, we still haven't got that yet. Um, I'm giving away the answers. You don't look, look away now. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. We got it. We got it. Um, and I trust you can, I can't see this now because it's really weird how um, PowerPoint takes up the whole screen as you would want it to if you were doing a presentation. I am simply sharing a quiz with you. So I can't see what's going on back on the stream. So you can make faces at me from the back all you wish at the moment. Just quick a sip of tea now. Before we pile into the quiz, question um. Mm. This is a very popular soup in Portugal, as you'll see on your screen here. Do apologize uh, to the podcast people. This is impossible to do. It is a, it is a very visual quiz. Um, suggest you uh, jump on YouTube. For, if, you, if you're up for quizzes and you want to know more about Portugal, jump on YouTube for this one. Uh, this is a very popular soup in Portugal. The traditional ingredients use collard greens. Actually, no, you're going to be all right on the podcast. Potatoes, onion, olive oil, garlic, black pepper, and salt. Some recipes also add me. Is it A, kale soup? Is it B, caldo verde? Is it C, cabbage soup? Or is it D, chorizo soup? That's question one. No prizes here. Um, but, um, well, the prize is you learn more about Portugal, right? Or depending on how well you do and how much you can retain of this. Question dois. Question, not qua. Qua. It's a hard Q, hard k sound, not a qua sound, everybody. As I was coached live in front of other people, humiliated for my pronunciation, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Portugal remains the champion in terms of per capita consumption of seafood in Europe. Did you know that? What is the average amount of seafood consumed per year per person in Portugal? Is it 27 kilos? This is extraordinary, right? Is it 27 kilos, 50 pounds of seafood? Is it 27 kilos? 104 pounds is it 57 kilos 126 pounds obviously vegetarians and vegans will not be part of this and i know some of you are who are watching who probably also looked away now when you saw that but it is a staggering figure and i think it does include fish okay to just give you a clue there um question tres these buildings are prolific across northern portugal they measure about 10 feet by five what are they used for and it's a stone structure stone granite structure a bit like a toblerone with, with high sides, are like tombs, the prisons, and they could be any of those. Um, car, car question. Uh, Portugal is the biggest cork producer in the world and produces more than 50% of the world's cork supply. Another fascinating and brilliant fact about Portugal. How soon can the bark be harvested after planting, however? 
Is it A, 10 years? Is it B, 15 years? Is it C, 20 years? Is it D, 25 years? And here we go. This is an odd picture, I thought. Three shoes. Who has three shoes? Question Cinco. Halfway through the quiz now, there are 1,473 companies employing 38,000. Excuse me one moment. My goodness, speaking too much this morning, 38,661 people in the footwear industry in Portugal. If you wear size eight shoes in the USA, which is the same size as six in the UK, what size would you need in Portugal? Is it A30? Is it B34? Is it C39? Is it D42? Fine looking shoes, I have to say. Um, just a bit odd. We're used to seeing shoes in pairs and that threw me. Question Seish. Uh, Portugal is almost identical in size to a U.S. state. Can you name that state? Would it be Utah A? Would it be B, Indiana? Would it be C, Alaska? Would it be D, Kentucky? Um, yeah, tricky one for anyone who who's didn't grow up in America. But then again, Americans that often don't know a lot about America. It's such a vast place. Question uh, said, Valencia is one of the most northerly cities in Portugal and is famous for its fortification back to castles on the left bank of the river Minho with Spain and on the other side. Hold on a minute. It's famous for its fortification on the left bank of the river Minho with Spain on the other side. Okay. If you were to drive on major roads from here to Faro in the south, how long would it take? So this is the, the question about driving north to south. And of course, it depends if you're a British, American or Portuguese driver. These times would vary, but this is according to Satnav, right? Just technically speaking, would it be two hours, 40 minutes? to travel from the most northern part or most northern one of the most northerly cities of Valencia down to Faro, eight hours and 40. B, would it be C, five hours and 40, or would it be D, three hours and 40 minutes? I'm going to linger on that as I look at this picture of Valencia and its fortification because you might want to just check that. Is it two hours 40, eight hours 40, five hours 40, or three hours 40? Question eight, would you greet someone or how would you greet someone this is an easy one. Come on, guys. I'll be surprised if you don't get this, but who knows? Would you? How would you greet someone in the afternoon in Portuguese? Would it be A, bom dia? Would it be B, botar? Would it be C, bonoit? Or would it be D, what's up? Okay, easy one, that, right? Question uh, nove. Uh, this beach on the Silver Coast is an international surfing center and boasts some of the world's biggest waves. Can you name it? Is it A, Nazare Beach? Is it B, Bikini Beach? Is it C, Praia de Rocha? And of course, it's D, Benidorm. Is it not? Maybe. We'll find out in just a moment. Um, Question Desh. This handsome fellow is a Portuguese water dog. We discovered these are the dogs owned by President Obama. What is the Portuguese word for dog? Is it o cão? Is it o cavalho? Is it o gato? Or is it o pooch? Um, so cão, carvalho, gato, or pooch. Portuguese word for Dog. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and come back and just see what you guys are saying there, uh, if anything, or if you even if you actually are still there. Good. This is oh my goodness, loads of incoming messages, and uh, bad is mostly good, isn't it? More to come, my friend says Frank. <laughs> good, excellent. That's just what I needed to hear and wanted to hear. And our word for the day from Anna is Muralia. Thank you. I will look that up and make that word of the week. I publish all of those. Um, anyone who supports the show uh, gets a digest of those. Uh, I know it's not a big deal, but it's, it's quite nice perhaps on a Sunday to get your digest of words. To um, And it, all you have to do is buy one, have, have bought me a Portuguese coffee at some point, I think. And uh, all supporters on coffee.com forward slash Carl Munson um, get that digest of words. Um, there's not a lot else I do for you. And I have to... <laughs> It has to be said, but hopefully that goes uh, some way to show my huge appreciation for anyone who has ever supported uh, Good Morning Portugal. I do really appreciate that. Absolutely. And uh, Muralia will be word of the day today and will join that digest on Sunday of the words of the week. And also, obviously, you have access to all the other words of the week that we've done. And I hope that is helping you with your uh, knowledge of Portuguese, um, the language and the grammar and everything, the nuances of the language. Um Okay, so well gel, says Gary. I think that's about drinking beer at 10.30 in the morning. And um, excellent. Okay, so there are a few. There are a few. Um, oh, Johnny has put in her whole set of results or answers to the questions there. Fantastic. So the, uh, the comments were full of the of answers. Uh, we're going to go back to the scoring now before we say goodbye this morning. Just about getting in under 
um, uh, 45 minutes, as, as we hope to do. Um, let me just uh, share the screen again then, and uh, we will give you the answers in just a moment as soon as I've figured out how to do this. It is quite difficult sharing PowerPoint, honestly. Um, there we go. That should be on your screen now. I want to be able now to st start the... Oh, uh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. I'm, oh, I, I'm, so this should be on your screen now. Uh, and I can't tell if it is or isn't. I won't see your messages if it's not. If something terrible has happened, uh, I'm just going to give the answers anyway. So Ashra Pushtas is the uh, Portuguese for answers to these questions. Of course, B, the popular soup in Portugal was B. Caldo Verde, okay? I would have thought you'd have got that. Um, this is a one you might not have got, 57 kilograms per head of seafood consumed by Portuguese people, the biggest consumers of seafood, I understand, in Europe. 57 kilograms per head, 126 pounds of seafood. Yum. Uh, so, you know, in America, people eat that in one sitting, don't they, at some of those competitions? Question uh, Tresh, these buildings, if you've ever wondered, and I have, what they're for, they are for corn storage. They're not for locking up a local naughty people not for storing wine they are not tombs um that's another subject to go into isn't it the beautiful um cemeteries of portugal and and how people honor and, and remember and respect their dead in portugal very different to where i'm from um but no nothing to do with tombs or wine storage or prisons these are corn storage uh, buildings and there will be a portuguese word for it which i'm afraid i do not know Congratulations if you got that. And congratulations if you got this. 25 years you have to wait for cork to come from the tree. That is slow. That's slow life, isn't it? Slow food, slow produce, slow way of life. Thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate that and take my hat off to anybody who can get into a business with that long uh, what product life cycle. It goes against everything that's happening in business at the moment, doesn't it? The idea of waiting 25 years for a product to mature. The ver first harvest is 25 years, and every nine years thereafter for the lifetime of the tree, which is 150 to 200 years. And that's why, in case you didn't know, why you do see these sort of uh, bare-naked oak trees around Portugal. You think, What's happened there? Um, it's naked, standing naked in, in the orchard. No, it's had its cork stripped. Uh, question five, size eight in the USA, size six in the UK is equivalent to 39. Uh, looking at that picture of those fine Portuguese sapatos there. Question six, sorry, I went through that a bit fast tonight. So 39 is the answer. Same as size eight in the USA or size six in the UK. Indiana is the state in the United States that is approximately uh, similar to the whole of Portugal. Uh, Indiana is 92,895 square kilometers, while Portugal is approximately 92,090 square kilometers. Whose job was it to measure that? The pop population of Indiana is 6.5 million, whereas the population of Portugal is 10.2 million. So a nice sparse population in Indiana, as, as I experience here in Portugal. Question seven, five hours, 40 minutes. And of course, if you are a Portuguese driver, it could well be three hours, 40, possibly. I don't know. But to drive the length of Portugal will take about five hours and 40 minutes and cover 660 kilometers or 480 miles. To drive the width of Portugal, say Elvash to Estril, will take about two hours and cover 226 kilometers or 141 miles. That's great information. Thank you, Jerry, for the sequel uh, here of your excellent quizzes. Botard, everyone must have got that right. Bon dia is used in the morning, Botard is used in the afternoon, and Bon Noite is used in the evening and night. Subject to some nuances, as always in Portugal, right? Um, that's a good guide, but it can be challenged. Question nine, Nazare Beach, of course, and not Benidorm, as I was trying to mislead you. This beach on the Silver Coast is the International Surfing Centre and boasts some of the world's biggest waves, which you've surely seen on social media. Absolutely amazing at Nazare Beach. Great place to visit. You know, you're on the Silver Coast. You can go to San Martino de Porto, Caldas, Obidos, great part of Portugal. Question 10, and of course, I would have thought you got this, but extra vocab with this, account is the word for dog in Portuguese. Cavalho is horse, and gato is cat, and pooch was just thrown in there mischievously by Jerry, to whom I'm very grateful for supplying that second quiz to us. Good fun. Um, let's see, how did you do? Do you want to let me know how many you got? Um, hold on a minute. Point of order, Chairman. Question three. They are, oh, okay. Those those tomb-like things for storing corn. Thank you, Anna. You've been so helpful this morning. Are called espiguero. 
Who got 10? Who got nine? Who got eight? Who got seven? Who got six? It was all for fun. And I just basically hope you learned something from that. Joe got six out of 10 this morning. Um, that's not so bad, Joe. Come on. Uh, you get a pastel donata for that. You'll have to buy it yourself, but you do get a pastel donata for that. Seven for Garvo. Um, pretty good, Gary. Pretty good. And uh, from Matthew Pierce Bondia, thank you uh, for your feature on registering Portuguese residency. I completed mine yesterday in Faro. Took 10 minutes. Boom. Good job, sir. So I'm uh, looking like Faro office is a good place to go to get yourself um, registered. Uh, and he's, I think Matthew's referring to pro probably the guide that we did with Expats Portugal, which will be in our YouTube channel in case anyone needs that. Star pupil this morning, as you might expect, Johnny is, is a very studious person. And I think a little bit competitive as well. Eight out of 10 for the Sagittarian Johnny, if I remember correctly. Uh, so well done to you, uh, Xander. Well, that was a fail, only half. But I got the Indiana question. That's good. Um, yes, face saved there. But really, you know, you still get a Pastel Donata as well, Xander. Where are you going to get one in Austin, uh, Texas? I, sorry, Houston, Texas, right? I do not know. Uh, Paul Williams got eight. Now, that's pretty good. Paul, you can be proud of yourself there. Um, and I, Anna's quiet. I'm wondering, as the Portuguese person, if she managed to get um, 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10. But then again, you know, the um, United States state question may have thrown you there, of course. Uh, Anna, thank you, Anna, for your help with that and for the word of the day. Um, really good of you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and she says, question uh, sounds like question. Let's put a, a phonetic pronunciation there. And yes, look, of course, she got 9 out of 10. Cheers, Anna. Thank you, everybody, for being such good sports this morning, having a bit of fun with that. Thanks to Jerry for putting that quiz together in the first place. And uh, I've really enjoyed myself this morning talking about castles, doing the quiz. And what was the other thing we talked about? Oh, bicycles, of course, the bicycle industry in Portugal. Happy days. Uh, have a good one, everybody. And uh, we will see you. It, yes, it was the Indiana question that threw Anna, as you may have expected. But good job anyway. Uh, bon dia to you. Abraços, beginos, teja, prossima. And yes, what's happening tonight? Yes, it's, it's Wednesday, isn't it? Forgive me. This, this week is rocketing by. Of course, we go back to the States tonight and uh, we will be doing the Hola Americas show um, this evening. And uh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. It's always, it always helps when people, when people show their love and appreciation. Great show, says Joe. Yeah, see you tonight for the Americas show and see you again, of course, in the morning if you're more of a morning person than a night owl. Take care. Bye for now. Have a good one. Bye.